Good afternoon to our distinguished guests, dignitaries, and honorable council members. Welcome to the swearing-in ceremony and inaugural plenary session of the President's Advisory Council on African Diaspora Engagement in the United States. My name is Denise Laurent Manti, and I serve as the Executive Director of this Advisory Council. The establishment of this council underscores the significance of our African diaspora community and the immeasurable contributions it has made to the United States. This council, with this diverse membership and collective wisdom, will play a pivotal role in fostering stronger bonds and enhancing our engagement, and harnessing the potential of the African diaspora to offer tangible avenues for cooperation. It is my distinct honor to now call this meeting to order by conducting a roll call of each council member. Starting with our chair, if you could just please um, respond by saying present. Bishop Sylvester Beeman. Present. Miss Mimi Alamayu. Alem Miss Rosalind Brewer. Present. Dr. Helene Gale. Present. Mr. Patrick Gaspard. Present. Mr. C.D. Glenn. Present. Mr. Osagi Imasogi. Present. Miss Almaz Nagash. Miss Chini Ogumike. Present. Mr. Ham Saranjogi. Present. Mr. Kevin Young. Thank you. We have 11 council members present for this meeting. Ms. Fala Davis regrettably could not be here with us today, but let the record note that the Department of State administered her oath on October 27th, and her commitment is duly recorded. Now, as we look forward to the work that lies ahead, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce a distinguished leader, a tireless champion of diplomacy, and a U.S. Senator who has been a steadfast advocate for stronger U.S.-Africa relations. Senator Christopher Coons of Delaware to deliver opening remarks. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, it is such a blessing to have the opportunity to briefly speak at the opening of what is an incredibly important day. Bishop, I think, I hope I can say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Bishop. You are an incredible dozen leaders from across our nation, folks who show with the remarkable arcs of your careers, your contributions, your accomplishments, exactly what is possible in this nation. As we all know, we're, there would be no America without African Americans. There would be no accomplishments. There would be no culture. There would be no tragedy. There would be no glory. There would be no soul. And that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Kevin, as the museum, um, you have played such a central role in curating and leading teaches all of us. African American history is American history, and the future of African Americans and the African diaspora today in America is the future of our nation. There is no more important continent for the 21st century than Africa. We are uniquely positioned to help with our history, with our strengths, with our skills, to engage with, connect with, and help lead the connections between the United States and Africa for too long neglected. So let me just simply say how excited I am that this commitment made in the President's Summit last December is now fully made. I suspect the reason I've been given the privilege of two minutes at the podium is I'm the guy who's gonna have to figure out how to sign the check <laughs> when this all moves forward. We've all heard of the Divine Nine. I think you are the Disciple Dozen. I think you are the Diaspora Disciple Dozen who like the disciples, will question and challenge, will test and demand, will hope and believe, and will take forward from this place from today a vision that says we know that America is greater and stronger when it recognizes, embraces, and builds on the roots of African Americans, on the promise of this moment with Africa, and when we see forward the possibilities that our Secretary of State has laid out so clearly. When the Congresswoman and I had a chance to travel with the Vice President to Ghana just a few months ago, it seems like a few days ago, I got to see my former Senate colleague in her glory. 
Maybe it was because she was away from the challenges and the daily pressures of DC. Maybe it was because there was a profound sense of being home. Maybe it was just because of the place and the moment. But I have never seen our Vice President more engaged, more excited, more energized. And I know that from today's comments from our Secretary and our Vice President, from your dialogue with each other, and from the boundless possibilities that you will help us chart, that this diaspora disciple dozen will open a critical next chapter in our nation's future. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Chris, it's always wonderful uh, to be with you, but especially on this day with this group on this occasion. Um, Senator Coons has been extraordinary in his devotion to Africa and his devotion to the relationship, the partnership between the United States and Africa, um, a matter of principal leadership for many years and an incredible partner. And of course, we always say, blessed be the check writers. <laughs> uh, Denise. To you, my great thanks, uh, and to an incredible team, Molly Fee, Judd Devermont, our colleagues from the State Department, the National Security Council staff, who've done so much to bring this council to life uh, today. And I also want to very much acknowledge the work of another extraordinary diplomat who I've had the privilege of working with and learning from for many years, Ambassador Johnny Carson, who helped share his unmatched expertise. Thank you. unmatched expertise and passion for driving U.S. engagement with Africa. At the State Department, when we say, here's Johnny, <laughs> this, is, this is what we mean. And to our new members, to their families, welcome. Um, this is a day we've been looking forward to for, for some time. And it is both an honor and a privilege and a joy to be part of the inaugural meeting of the President's Advisory Council on African Diaspora Engagement. Last year uh, in Pretoria, I had an opportunity to lay out our strategy for Sub-Saharan Africa. It spells out shared priorities across the continent, how we intend to promote transparent, accountable government, to strengthen security, to create broad-based economic opportunity, to build climate resilience, food security, and so much more. And at the heart of this blueprint is partnership. It's about what the United States can do with African nations, not for African nations. And that's because on every issue of consequence to the region, our progress depends on working together as equal partners. That means strengthening our relationships between our governments, between the private sector, between our civil societies. And it means strengthening engagement with Africa's dynamic diaspora here in the United States, the descendants of formerly enslaved people and the nearly two million African immigrants who maintain extraordinary close ties to their home countries. Now, I've had the chance to spend some time with this incredibly vibrant community myself, here as well as in Africa. Uh, that includes sitting down with a younger generation, young leaders who are creating jobs for young people in the United States and in African nations, training American nonprofits in techniques learned from fighting infectious diseases in Malawi to so much more. What's clear is how profoundly this diaspora has shaped societies on not one, but on two continents. Just last week, in fact, President Biden uh, awarded the National Science Medal uh, to Gaviza Ejeta, an Ethiopian American plant geneticist whose research is helping literally millions of people grow crops that can withstand extreme temperatures that we're increasingly seeing. The significance, the promise of the African diaspora is so great that the African Union actually recognized it as the continent's sixth region. We want to further empower and amplify that immense potential. That's why at last year's African Leaders Summit, President Biden created the Advisory Council to give us advice recommendations on how we can better strengthen ties between the people of African countries 
and the people of the United States. In the months since the, uh, the summit, the White House, the State Department have consulted stakeholders. We've considered more than 100 candidates. And ultimately, we asked the 12, as I think you're quickly becoming known, uh, to serve in this vital role. Now, no single group can capture the diversity, the vitality of the African diaspora. But this is a pretty remarkable collection of leaders. You all hail from nine US states, with roots stretching back to more than half a dozen African countries. You come from the worlds of business, higher education, the faith community, the nonprofit sector. We have a former ambassador to South Africa, a two-time WNBA All-Star. We even have an EGOT winner. So now Viola Davis can add advisory council member <laughs> to the Emmy, the Grammy, the Oscar, the Tony Award. And I know which one will get praise applied, pride of place on the mantelpiece. Uh, and because this is an initiative that President Biden launched, it seems very fitting that our council chairman is from the state of Delaware. In the coming months, we will be looking to each of you as a source of innovative ideas. Uh, this group is a platform for meaningful dialogue and a bridge to strengthen connections between the United States and the African diaspora. And that's especially true as we continue to deliver on the commitments that we made at the Leaders' Summit. Ambassador uh, Carson has been following up on these commitments. That's why President Biden asked him to take on a role immediately after the summit, to make sure that while we had three incredible days with our colleagues from Africa here in Washington, it's the 362 days that follow that really make a difference. Are we making good on what we said we would do? And that is vitally important to keeping faith with the summit and keeping faith with our partners around the world. We're going to solicit your ideas on ways that we can get more diaspora members involved in trade and in investment in development, all related to Africa, to improve everything from deploying clean energy to expanding digital access across the continent. We'll consult on how to strengthen ties through educational exchanges, like the Young Africa Leaders Initiative and International Visitor Leadership Program, two of really the flagship programs that we've had, one dating back many years in the State Department, another to the Obama and Biden administration, but both incredibly vital for making these connections, uh, creating these connections, and building new networks uh, among our people that will carry us forward for many years to come. And we'll explore ways to further cultural connections across sports, across television, across music, across fashion. We'll seek your partnership in further advancing equity and opportunity for the diaspora community, including through the UN Development Forum on People of African Descent. Strengthening equity is a key focus of the State Department's own Equity Action Plan. And if I can make maybe just a small recruiting pitch, um, the African diaspora has brought so much to our own diplomacy over so many years. Um, one of the things we'll ask you to do is to see if you can help bring more of this incredible talent to bear um, at the State Department itself. We are on a recruiting mission. We want the best pe uh, people for our diplomacy, and we want a department that actually reflects the country that it represents. Um, this isn't just a matter of doing the right thing. It's doing the smart thing. We're operating in an incredibly diverse world at a time where there's a greater multiplicity and complexity of challenges than, than ever before, certainly in the 30 years that I've been involved in this. The greatest advantage we have in operating in that world, the greatest advantage we have in actually advancing American values and American interests is our own diversity. Uh, and so if we're shortchanging ourselves by leaving uh, that diversity off the, uh, off the team and off the playing field, it's not right and it's not good for America. So we're going to look to you to see if you can help us recruit some new talent. Now, many of you have spoken powerfully about how having a connection to this country and to one in Africa gives you the best of both worlds. Each of you carries those worlds within you. And with this council advising our government's efforts, uh, we hope you'll help us bring out the best in both African countries and in our own. 